Hello and welcome to lecture uh, 17 of aerospace propulsion. Today we're going to start talking about component characteristics. So we haven't really yet considered how our engines will behave when if they have to operate away from their design point. So for our new efficient uh, aircraft engines that was the cruise point. Um, so conditions like starting the engine, variations in inlet temperature and pressure, and variations in thrust required. The way we'll do this is first we'll look at individual component behavior, um, which is chapter uh, 11 of the text and uh, covered in today's lecture and the next lecture, uh, 17 and 18. And then we'll sort of put it together to consider the behavior of the whole engine for various engine configurations in chapter 12 um, in the lectures 19 through 21. So today we'll cover uh, sort of the cold half of the engine, so no uh, nozzles, fans, and compressors. Um, and we'll cover the hot part of the engine, combustors and turbines, in the following lecture. The key messages to take away from today's lecture are that unchoked nozzles have a one-to-one -one relationship between the non-dimensional mass flow and the inlet stagnation to exit static pressure ratio. Fans and compressors provide more pressure rise for a given rotational speed as you reduce the mass flow entering them and the pressure rise roughly scales with the rotational speed squared. And a fan or compressor working line is determined by its downstream components. Large pressure ratio compressors have poorly matched stages at off design conditions um, and at, therefore at reduced speed, the rear stages can choke at the same time that the front stages are going into stall. One of the things we're going to do in these next couple of chapters is improve the accuracy of our analysis by using variable gas properties. Up to now we've assumed that we can treat all the gas in the engine as air with constant properties, but actually uh, CP and gamma um, vary with temperature uh, and due to changes in gas composition due to combustion as you can see here. So a better approximation is to assume constant gas properties within a certain component, but allow them to vary from one component to the next. Um, so we'll use a constant value for compressors and a different constant value for turbines. So in compressors, of course, the, the gas is pure air, um, and so we have our gamma of 1.4. Uh, and in turbines, uh, for where the equivalence ratio uh, is typically about 3, for the combustion products, um, the gamma at the appropriate temperature range would be normally about about 1.3. And it turns out, just kind of by coincidence, that the specific gas constant is still about 287 joules per kilogram per Kelvin for, for both sets of gases. So it makes it easy to calculate the changes in CP. But you can see from the upper plot here that um, while our CP for air is going to be, you know, about what we've always treated it as, it's going to be a higher value um, because of the lower gamma in the turbine. We'll start by talking about nozzles. This is maybe the easiest component because uh, there's no react chemical reactions taking place and there's no moving parts. Commercial aircraft always have convergent nozzles as opposed to convergent divergent nozzles. And in the case of a convergent nozzle, the nozzle pressure ratio, um, which we define, we define as the inlet stagnation pressure to the exit static pressure ratio. Um, and basically we'll assume the flow is isentropic up to our throat, which is, which is also our exit. So under these conditions, the mass flow is fixed once the, pr uh, the pressure ratio exceeds that required for choking. Now what that mass flow, non-dimensional mass flow is, depends of course on gamma, and we see that here, that the non-dimensional mass flow is higher at the choked condition, uh, and also that the choked condition happens at a different pressure ratio when uh, we have uh, lower gamma. So uh, our, when we have lower gamma, we get choking earlier, lower, at a lower pressure ratio, but the non-dimensional mass flow is higher because of the higher CP. And we see that here. So the non-dimensional value that we've been using with gamma 1.4 is 1.281, whereas with gamma 1.3, it's 1.389. And after, right, once we hit that point, it doesn't matter what we do to the pressure ratio, we can raise it more and more, 
um, it doesn't change the non-dimensional mass flow going in. Of course, the physical mass flow continues to go up because if, it, 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 if, if we're raising this pressure ratio by raising the inlet stagnation pressure because this value right here is going up, right? So if this whole thing is a constant, then mass flow must also be going up. Uh, the temperature will typically be going up too, um, but because it's under the square root um, and the temperature rise is less than the pressure rise anyway, uh, unless we have very inefficient components uh, upstream, then, then, then the mass flow will physically rise. Now the conditions downstream of the throat are important for the generation of thrust. Um, so if we consider our nozzle discharging to atmospheric pressure, in general, from control volume analysis, we know that the gross thrust is um, m dot times the, the v9, which is our exit velocity, plus the difference between the exit pressure and the atmospheric pressure times the nozzle exit area. So when is the second term non-zero? I uh, apologize for this little error here. There, there's no next slide with options um, be because I took out the activity. So, but think about this for a minute and kind of come up with an answer yourself before moving on to the next part of the video. And during the tutorial, we'll take up this question.